closed captions available. To assist worshipers who may be hearing impaired, this worship service is closed captioned on Facebook using Facebook's automatic captions. We do not yet have access to YouTube captions. While these captions are imperfect, we hope that they are of assistance to all who need them. If you wish to see the closed captions, you must turn them on. To do that, click the cog icon below this image and then turn on closed captions. Audible announcements available. To assist worshipers who may be visually impaired, these announcements will be read aloud following the postlude. If you wish to hear the announcements, please stay on the stream after the service concludes.
Closed captions available. To assist worshipers who may be hearing impaired, this worship service is closed captioned on Facebook using Facebook's automatic captions. We do not yet have access to YouTube captions. While these captions are imperfect, we hope that they are of assistance to all who need them. If you wish to see the closed captions, you must turn them on. To do that, click the cog icon below this image and then turn on closed captions. Audible announcements available. To assist worshipers who may be visually impaired, these announcements will be read aloud following the postlude. If you wish to hear the announcements, please stay on the stream after the service concludes.
Good morning. So we have been preparing for weeks now for this day, but we do want to practice a little bit so that we do this just right. And I want you to turn to page four in your bulletin. And we are going to practice the opening acclamation. We've got two things to practice before service starts. We're going to be chanting today. It is one of the most festive ways that we celebrate the Eucharist. And so we're going to practice just a little bit. So my part goes, Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. And I need you to do that with gusto. Otherwise, we'll have to do it over again at the beginning of the service. So let's do it one more time. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Bravo. You guys are ready with that. All right. My sermon is highly participatory this morning. And I, when I hold up a sign, I need you to read what's on the sign with as much energy as you just sang. Oh, we don't even need to do that again. <laughs> Thank you. You are ready. Please join me in our opening hymn as it is printed in your service bulletin. Happy Easter. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we, who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection, may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. lesson for today is taken from Isaiah. I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am, I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it, nor the cry of distress. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it, or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days, or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth, and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not bend, they shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bear children for calamity, for they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord, and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the serpent, its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord, the word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all would be made alive in Christ but each in his own order. Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bit down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me. Because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, 
I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that, she, that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. take away my chocolate, you can take away my lattes and even my wine, but please do not take away my alleluias. For me, removing the alleluias from our worship during Lent is the hardest part of Lent. In one word, alleluia captures the essence of Easter and therefore the essence of Christianity. We celebrate Easter because God wins. Jesus Christ died and rose again from the dead. God wins. Now, because humankind tends to be stubborn and we are generally lousy at following directions, there is much that we can do to slow down, thwart, and otherwise undermine God's plans for creation. But in the end, Alleluia. you guys are awesome. <laughs> Alleluia with an A is the Greek transliteration of the Hebrew word hallelujah with an H. Greek speakers created a new word with their own letters to sound like and have the same meaning as the Hebrew word hallelujah. In Hebrew, hallelujah literally means praise the Lord. 46 weeks out of the year, we use the word hallelujah multiple times every time we worship. Logically, one would think that we would be safe to assume that the Bible is full of hallelujahs and alleluias. Not so. Imagine my surprise, and I was surprised. Hallelujah is only found 13 times, and it's in the Psalms in the Old Testament. And get this, scholars believe that those hallelujahs were edited in after the Jewish people returned from the exile in Babylon hundreds of years after those psalms were originally crafted. In the New Testament, the word alleluia is used only four times in the book of Revelation. Alleluia does not come naturally to humankind. We are far more likely to look for reasons to blame God than we are to find reasons to praise God. God has to do something big, huge, over the top, like returning us from exile or raising a man from the dead to get us up to pay attention and notice that. God That's right. In the church, we have a saying that began long ago as lex orandi, lex credendi. 
This is Latin for the law of prayer is the law of belief. Or in other words, what we pray shapes what we believe. Early Christians did not have easy lives. Not only were they a persecuted minority, but they lived in the ancient world. They did not have iPhones, modern medicine, or ice cream. Ugh. They understood the human tendency to focus on the hard things of life because they lived them every day. Those ancient Christians crafted worship liturgies that would remind them over and over again that God wins. They wrote liturgies littered with the word Alleluia. The Greek Orthodox, who still use these ancient liturgies, value this reminder so much they will not remove the Alleluias, even in Lent. The prophet Isaiah wrote to a people who believed they were all but dead. They had lost sight of God's resurrecting work in creation. The portion of Isaiah that we just heard read was written shortly after the Jews returned to Judah from the Babylonian exile. Although they returned with high expectations for a rapid rebuilding of their homeland and an inevitable restoration of their national, national honor, the realities of their lives failed to live up to their dreams. Isaiah spoke and wrote to remind his people that God's work in creation was not finished at the end of the seven days. Not only is God not finished, God's work of creation is ongoing and it's constant. The people of Israel would be selling God short if they only looked for restoration and rebuilding as evidence of resurrection. They were to expect to be a part of God's new creation. In rich and exuberant poetry, Isaiah describes God's creative work as a party where God's joyful nature overflows, no one is left untouched by the creative power of God's resurrecting work. We come to church on Easter to celebrate the resurrection. Most Christians associate the resurrection only with the story of Jesus' death and his rising to life again. The prophet Isaiah reminds us that resurrection is God's power to create new life and redeem even the direst of situations. It is the work of all Christians to look for the living among the dead. Evidence of resurrection is around us all the time. Hallelujah. In 1984, singer-songwriter Leonard Cohen released a song called Hallelujah. In the years since the song has, was written, it has been covered over 200 times in numerous languages. The song has a beautiful haunting melody that floats over alternating major and minor chords. In the music, both the music and the lyrics speak to the simple complexity of human existence and hence the song's universal appeal. Cohen wrote over 80 verses for this song, each verse followed by a chorus of hallelujahs. After perusing a sampling of these verses, I was struck that in Cohen's mind there is not a circumstance in life to which the ultimate response to any, is anything but hallelujah. Cohen's lyrics traverse everything from King David and Solomon to modern governments, from relationships beginning to relationships ending, from the birth of children to the death of parents. Throughout the song, there is an overarching theme of God's incredible generosity towards broken humanity. Because of Easter, no matter what life throws at us, like Cohen, we can trust God wins. 
In the final verse of the song, as Cohen recorded it, Cohen contemplates his own mortality and says, I did my best, it wasn't much. I couldn't feel, so I tried to touch. I've told the truth, I didn't come to fool you. And even though it all went wrong, I'll stand before the Lord of song with nothing on my tongue but hallelujah, 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 Returning to page nine in your service bulletin, please join me in standing as you are able as we celebrate our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. On this day of resurrection joy, let us offer our prayers for ourselves, our neighbors, and our world. Renewing God, the good news of your resurrection changed the world. Give church leaders and all the baptized the same excitement as the women at the tomb, and inspire us to share your abundant life. Merciful God, our prayer. sustaining God, your creation abounds with signs of new life in budding trees and newborn creatures. Provide fertile soil, ample sunlight, and nourishing rain for the growth of plants, and provide farmers with a plentiful harvest. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Sheltering God, strengthen and sustain all who support vulnerable people across the world empower government agencies and international organizations that provide for refugees and migrants forced to leave their homelands. Guide and guard the people of Ukraine and Russia, merciful Lord. Receive our prayer. Encouraging God, you do a new thing among us. We pray for those gripped by fear and anxiety or who suffer in any way especially those on the Grace Church prayer list and the friends of Grace Church prayer list. Send us your healing presence to places of hunger, 
pain, illness, or overwhelming sorrow. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Surprising God, you offer endless ways for us to delight in your grace. Give this community of faith a sense of joy and wonder in exploring new avenues of faith formation, worship, and discipleship. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Resurrecting God, you make us alive in Christ. Thank you for blessing us with faithful witness who now rest in you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We offer to you these petitions and we care, that we carry in our hearts, trusting your abundant and ever-present mercy. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. God's peace, everybody. God's peace, please be seated. Again, welcome, whether you're here in this space or whether you're joining us through digital ministry, we are delighted that you're here to celebrate Christ's resurrection with us this morning. Announcements in your bulletin begin on about page 20, I believe, and there's a lot there. But mostly this morning, I want to say thank you. Holy Week and Easter do not happen without a lot of work on a lot of people's parts. First, Heather, Chris, all the choirs, bell ringers, wherever you are in this building, and the trebles that sang last weekend, thank you, and all the musicians that have enhanced worship throughout the week. The Altar Guild, Digital Ministry Team, Acolytes, Ushers, Kim Sullivan, Tracy Holmes, and Anna Rodriguez-Massey for all their work in the office. Kim had to jump into the deep end of the pool and learn Episcopal liturgy in two weeks. Steve Dean and Jib Bailey, I'm pretty sure nothing would happen at Grace if they weren't here. Alex and Eliza, thank you very much. The Flower Guild and all who gave memorial flowers so that the building could look as beautiful as it is, and the altar guild and flower team members that worked so hard to make it look this beautiful. Thank you very, very much. There is a festive reception downstairs following this service, so I hope that you will join us for a little repast after this service before you go on your way that you might greet one another. We are an Episcopal church and we worship in that tradition, but this is the Lord's table. All people are welcome and invited to join us for the Feast of Holy Communion. We'll have two communion stations here at the base of the altar steps. As you're guided forward by the ushers, you will have a uh, host placed in your outstretched hands. We have gluten-free host available upon request. Now, should you want to participate but not take communion, we invite you to come forward for a blessing. Simply cross your arms across your chest. That'll let us know that you desire a blessing instead of Holy Communion. But please, join us for the feast. Also, after this service, there is a list in the back with cards sorted by zip code. And I invite you to go back there and look and see where your zip code is. And if you see a card that is in your zip code and you would like to do us a kind favor and a member of our church who is homebound a kind favor, come and grab a flower, a set of flowers, or I think they'll be brought to the back by that time, and deliver it. It's a way to meet some people that you might not otherwise get to meet. And it ensures that these flowers get to people who um, could use the cheer and an Easter blessing from you. So please, make yourself available if you can. Do not neglect to do good and share what you have. For sacrifices such as these are pleasing to God.
Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is a right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of his name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. the gifts of God for the people of God.
Returning to page 15 in your book, uh, in your leaflet, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us, living members, Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have too much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. In the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always.
Sunday, April 17th, 2022. following Easter Sunday. Grace House will have minimal staffing the week after Easter. Clergy will be available for pastoral emergencies. April 24th is the second Sunday after Easter, and there will be a 5.30 p.m. Eastertide Evensong with Youth Music Ministry in the Sanctuary. Eastertide Evensong. On April 24th at 5.30 p.m., there will be an Eastertide Evensong with the Youth Music Ministry in the Sanctuary. Memorial Service for David Williams. Memorial services for David Williams will take place in the sanctuary on Saturday, April 30th from 2 to 4 p.m. There will be a reception in the Undercroft following the service. Grace Episcopal Day Schools Spring Fundraiser and Silent Auction. Tickets and info at gebs.org auction. Join us at Campfire Under the Stars for an evening of great food and friendship as we celebrate the kickoff of this year's Spring Fundraiser and Silent Auction. This will be a catered event with live music, beer and wine, dancing, a raffle drawing, a special live presentation, and bidding on all of our amazing silent auction items. You won't want to miss this signature event. Funds raised will support Grace's amazing teachers and the Variable Tuition Program. This event is for adults only, so please plan accordingly. More information and tickets at geds.org auction. Campfire Under the Stars is Saturday, April 30th from 6.30 to 9.30 p.m. at 9411 Connecticut Avenue, Kensington, Maryland, Interested in sponsoring or donating an item or service for the event? Simply fill out our online form or email Director of Advancement, Carl Vela, at kvela at geds.org. Youth Group Spring 2022 Kickoff Series. Mark your calendars. We have a date for a mission trip. We need to get ready. May 1st, hear about the mission trip, brainstorm ideas for a fundraiser, plan a fun activity, after the 11 o'clock worship in the parish hall. May 15th, Jib Bailey Sunday. Be in church to invite the congregation to participate in your fundraiser. May 21st, the fundraising event. June 4th or 5th, the service event. June 11th or 12th, do the fun thing you planned. July 2nd or 3rd, youth group gathering for those who are in town. July 16th or 19th, youth group mission trip. 
Attention 2022 high school graduates. If you are graduating from high school this spring, please let us know. May 1st is Youth Sunday. We would like to include a short bio, 125 words or less, for all of our high school graduates in the bulletin. Tell us where you are graduating from and what you're looking forward to in the next year. Send your name and bio to K-I-M-B-E-R-L-Y at graceepiscopalchurch.org. Get your Grace Church name tag. One way to keep our community accessible to all, newcomers, occasional worshipers, and even the forgetful, is by wearing our cheerful Grace name tags. We are trying to make the name tags as personalized and convenient as possible. That way we can each extend and receive a more personal welcome as we deepen our unity in Christ. So, how do I get my name tag? Every name tag includes a picture of your household members, an icon representing a way in which you connect to Grace Church, and of course your name. Plus, we have three attachment options. To get started, the members of your household should find John Wilson or Paul Purnell at the base of the stairs from the Narthek after Sunday services. One of them should be there on the first and third Sundays of the month, and perhaps after other services or during other events. It takes the family less than five minutes to get a picture taken and make the choices. Should I leave my name tag at church, or should I take it with me? Yes, either way is fine with us. There are no rules. The name tag rack will be moved around to make it convenient for everyone to find and return name tags, but please keep your name tag in your car or wherever you like if you prefer. I lost my name tag, or I want to make a change. What should I do? There will be a sheet at the base of the stairs coming down from the narthex. Just fill it in and look for your new name tag to gracefully appear in the rack within a week or two. If you have any questions or would like to help with the name tag ministry, contact John Wilson at 828-337-8260. The Episcopal 101 and Grace Church Primer. Are you new to Grace Church? Were you confirmed using the 1928 Book of Common Prayer? Want to spend some time talking about what it means to say you're an Episcopalian? Want to get to know the people who call Grace Church their spiritual home? This learning opportunity might be for you. Join Pastor Sarah as we read our way through the Episcopal Questions, Episcopal Answers, and learn about Grace Church ministries and history from guest speakers. Loaner books are provided. For those interested in becoming on the books members of the Episcopal Church, this class prepares you for confirmation, reception, and reaffirmation, terms you will learn about in this class. Join us in person or virtually via Zoom. Follow the link in today's bulletin for the Zoom meeting. Join us on April 24th or May 1st. Celebrating Jib Bailey. Plans are underway for a Jib Bailey Sunday on May 15th. Grace Church wants to celebrate Jib with gusto for his many years of service to our community. Jib elected not to have a purse collected for him, but has agreed to have a new processional banner commissioned in his name. We are currently accepting contributions for this purpose. You may contribute in one of several ways. Donate online using the Grace Church website, drop a check in the offertory on Sundays, or mail a check into the parish office. Please be sure to indicate on the memo line of your check that your contribution is for Jib's banner. Prayer Requests To share news or request pastoral support, please call the parish office at 301-585-3515. If it's after hours, select extension 10 to leave your message for the clergy. To add a name to the prayer list, please email communications at graceepiscopalchurch.org. Throughout the week, the clergy and Grace Church chapter of Daughters of the King pray for the people listed on our prayer list. The Daughters of the King also pray daily for those who submit prayer requests. Prayer requests may be adopt, dropped in the designated box in the chapel or sent by email to our private confidential email address. That address is dok at graceepiscopalchurch.org. We welcome your prayers via Zoom, the clergy, or email. 